It's time for you all to wake up and shift your paradigm. This world is the kingdom of darkness and we are living in its last days. It won't be long before the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat and the earth and everything therein shall be burnt up. The Luciferian elite have been setting up the new world order and now they've established the globalist beast system for the rise of that wicked one and revealing of the man of sin who comes after the workings of Satan. Don't take my word for it. Read the Bible and you'll know that perilous times shall come in the last days and we are in the last days. Because in Kabbalah, the god above the Sephirot tree is Ein Sof, and that means like the one without end or the endless one, the boundless one. And I show in my book, and my book is really just like a compilation of, of rabbinic quotes from the Talmud and the Kabbalah. But in Kabbalah, their god Ein Sof creates Elohim. He is the creator of the God of Genesis. And so I think it's just really important for Christians to understand that we are, we are not serving the same God as the Kabbalah rabbis. Okay, I'll go over like the cosmology. It's, it's really, um, it's going to be shocking maybe and bizarre to those who have never heard it. Okay, so Ein Sof. He is the, he is, um, he, it's called Zimzum. <laughs> the sparks, Some of the, terms, the sparks. The, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. He, he came from a point, he created a point of light, it says, and then he contracted himself. And then he created the 10 spheres of the Sephirot tree. So the one at the top is called the crown and it's also called Keter or Keter, and it's also called Elohim, and that is the God of Genesis. So there again, Ein Sof creates Genesis, or creates um, Elohim, and this Elohim, or Keter, is androgynous. He's male and female, and that might bring to mind the Baphomet. I mean, this all goes back to Mystery Babylon is really what it is. So at the top of the tree is Keter, and male and female, and from him comes the, the next two Sephirot, Hakma and Bina. And then Hakma and Bina come together in what's called Heros Gamos. It's like a mystical sexual union, and that is depicted by the six pointed star. The the star, the triangle, excuse me, the triangle with the upward point and the triangle coming down represent fire and water. And then those two come together in a sexual union and then they create the next Sephira. And it goes all the way down to the last Sephira, which is Malkut. That's the earth. That's the kingdom of God. That's really the kingdom of God is Israel, physical Israel what we would know today as Zionism. But the interesting thing is um, the Kabbalah says that those ten spheres could not hold the light of Ensof and they shattered. And it was up to Keter or Keter, people pronounce it different ways, who is also Adam Kadmon. This is the celestial Adam it's not the Adam that we think of in the Bible. He puts it all back together and there's like, there's lights coming out of his forehead and he builds this whole thing again. And when the shattering happened, you mentioned the sparks, the sparks scattered and some fell down to the earth. Some went back up to their source. But one of the interesting things is, is part of the sparks went into the abyss. 
See, there's a hidden uh, sephira right under Keter, and that's called Da'at, and that's called that means knowledge, and it's also referred to as the abyss, and some of those sparks fell into the abyss, so that's considered uh, part of the Shekinah, the female aspect of God, and I think it was Gershom Sholem in my in my book, I quote him, he said that God himself, because in Kabbalah everything is one, and because everything is one, God himself is in that pit waiting to come out. And he can't or she cannot come out until she has assistance from those who are calling on her to come out. I'm going to tell you a secret. There is only one way to get this collect call. May it be, here's the, 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 the prayer in English, may it be your will that at the sounding of the shofar that we blow today, we will be as a sod fabric that is filled with the fear of the one in charge, Tartiel, as you accepted Elijah, blessed be his name, and Yeshua. This is the only place in rabbinic language that the name Yud, Shin, Vav, Ein is mentioned that Yeshua, who is called the Prince of the Face, who is being Prince Metatron, may you fill us with his mercy. Blessed be your name, Lord of mercies. Hello. It's possible the very elect will be deceived. Yeah. And so, you know, we've we've just been there's so many books about the deception of Islam or different uh, branches of the occult, but the way that you know Zionism is just like you said exploding, and I, I give quotes in my book, you know that even New Age leaders said, and I read this for thirty years that the evangelical church itself would be the main instrument to bring this new world order about. And Alice Bailey said the same thing. Yes. So I warned about this for years, but getting to the root of it, you know, none of that really to see. I, when I was doing my research, it, it was it was like a lot of people weren't really too interested or listening because they were not deceived by new age leaders and practices or Hinduism or even Islam. But this Zionism, this kingdom of God on earth, this Metatron posing as Yeshua is very, very deceptive. And I, I see a lot of people going over to that, crossing over, crossing over into Judaism. And when everyone was just, you know, cr on the crying out about the uh, Sharia law, it was like the Lord was showing me that's almost like a distraction. I mean, I know it's real, but I started telling people about the Noahide laws, and these are found in the Babylonian Talmud. And there are six. The one that we are concerned about as Christians, there are six laws. The seventh is to establish courts of justice to enforce the others. And I've heard that there are currently Noahide training centers all over the United States right now. Um, the Chabad Lubavitch rabbis are probably the main force behind this. They they meet with the presidents of the United States and, and different government leaders of other nations, the United Nations, and they get these signed in year after year to an to make sure that they're still in place. Um, but the one that we are concerned about is the prohibition uh, against idolatry. And one of the ways that that's listed is you shall not profane the oneness of God. See, what the, what the rabbis of Kabbalah and the Talmud rabbis are doing, some of them maybe even unknowingly, they have rejected Jesus Christ, and therefore they're constantly pushing prophecy out to the future, and even probably having a part in what is called self-fulfilled prophecy. 
So they're trying to, to make these, when they say, say Zechariah, in that day the Lord shall be one. And the, the Kabbalah says that Hashem will, will be one, and the Tetragrammaton alone shall be exalted in that day. So anyone, any Christian who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Messiah would be guilty of idolatry under Noahide law. And this, this severe penalty, it says, in the Babylonian Talmud is beheading. So that's a chilling thought if those laws were ever actually put in place. Um, and I can talk about the, okay, this was really interesting. <laughs> okay, again, we think Jewish people, they believe in the Old Testament, they believe in the Genesis account of creation. I found in my research in the Zohar the account of creation, according to the Zohar, is, you know, Paul talks about Jewish fables. And I'm just going to give you the account of creation according to the Zohar. So that when, when Ein Sof went to create the world, the letters of the Hebrew alphabet are considered living entities. And these, um, Kabbalah is based on gematria, divination, numerology, a lot of it. So there's endless formulas. There's three different ways of, uh, three different types of gematria, and it involves these Hebrew letters. So the Hebrew letters, there's 22, and each letter went before Insof, and the from the last letter to the first. So I'm just going to read this uh, quote here, and this is from the Zohar. All right. The letter Tav. The letter Tav advanced in front and pleaded, May it please you, O Lord of the world, to place me first in the creation of the world, seeing that I am the concluding letter of Emet, which is truth which is engraved upon thy seal. And I just want to stop here and say, any, I, I kept coming across the word seal and sign and the word engravings. And anytime you see those, you, you just want to think mark, the mark. So the letter Tov says to Ensov that he is uh, the concluding letter of Emet, which is engraved upon thy seal. And seeing that you are called by this very name of Emet, or truth, it is most appropriate for the king to begin with the final letter of Emet and to create with me the world. The Holy One, blessed be he, said to her, said to the letter Tav, you are worthy and deserving but it is not proper that I begin with you the creation of the world, since you are destined to serve as a mark on the foreheads of the faithful ones who have kept the law from Aleph to Tav, and through the absence of this mark, the rest will be killed. Mm -hmm. Wow, and, and you explained about the Vav, Vav, Vav being 666, which is pretty interesting as well. Yes, okay. Um, or, yeah, the Tav, Tav. Yeah, Tav. The, the Tav is actually, in my research I found, is made up of three Vavs. Um, one, one on the left, one on the top, and one on the right. So in the book of Revelation, we see that there is the the mark of the beast the name and the number of the name so in kabbalah we've got several different things going on here we've got the aleph and the tav that's the first and the last letters of the hebrew alphabet and that is the mark according to the zohar the aleph and the tav denotes the people who fulfill the law from Aleph to Tav or from beginning to end. And that is 
we'll just go back to the Noahide laws for a minute. That's the purpose of getting the Gentiles under Noahide laws because the rabbis of Kabbalah truly believe that when all the nations are under rabbinic authority, uh, obeying the law, so you've got the 613 laws for the Jewish people and then the seven Noahide laws for the Gentiles. And they see this in their timeline according to the prophecy of the Zohar. We should probably, I should probably read the prophecy just to inform the listeners. There's a timeline and they see this Noahide law and getting Gentiles under the law as the last crucial step in their timeline to bring their Messiah. So one one form of the mark according to the Kabbalah is the Aleph and the Tav. So you would have the first and last letters of the alphabet. Um, another one is the word uh, Emet, which is truth. Um, it's interesting also that Metatron in one of the Kabbalah writings, or it might be the Kol Hator, which I think Rabbi David Joel Bax speaks about a lot. Metatron has the word Emet, or Israel, excuse me, he has the word Israel engraved on his forehead. And as I was doing my research, the Lord told me to, or he directed me to look into the Shema prayer, the Shema that is the black cube phylacteries that the rabbis wear when they're reciting the Shema from Deuteronomy 6. Hero Israel, the Lord is one. Because see, they don't, they don't want anything to do with Jesus, any kind of trinity or anything like that. So I kept searching and researching and I finally came across a, a Rabbi Zamir Cohen. Uh, teaching on the tefillin. Now, within those cubes, now remind, I uh, keep in mind that they are on the forehead and on the arm, wrapped around the hand. And I came across Rabbi Zemir Cohen, who's a pretty well-known uh, rabbi in Israel, and he said that the tefillin contain a huge secret, a very big secret that within the foreheaded shin, you've got a regular letter shin on one side of the tefillin and on the other side is a foreheaded shin. And he said within that foreheaded shin is a vav, it's concealed, a vav, a vav, and another vav. And that's 666. And in Kabbalah, vav is the connector. It's the connector between heaven and earth as above, so below. And I've even seen Isaac Shapira teaching on the Vav, how Israel has to take on the Vav. I'm not quite understanding what he's saying yet, but he is saying that when their Messiah comes, that his name will actually be changed by the Vav. Of modern Satanism, and ritual magic. The son of a devout Christian couple, Edward Alexander Crowley, was born in Lymington, Spain in 1875. After Alvern School in Tonbridge College, he read natural sciences at Trinity College, Cambridge. On a visit to Sweden, though, he experienced a life changing vision which persuaded him of his spiritual vocation, a calling which he marked by changing his name to Alistair. There's not an occult system or society that exists today that wasn't influenced by Crowley and Kabbalah. His rituals were based on the Jewish Kabbalah and combined with ritual sex magic, spelled with Crowley's signature K at the end, of magic. He also practiced ritual sacrifice. Crowley stated that the perfect sacrifice was a male child of perfect innocence years of age. He was known 
as the great beast 666, Para Duro, Nakashnu, the wickedest man in the world, and controversial occultist, but also very noted. He wrote widely, founded his own religious order, and designed a set of tarot cards that, believe it or not, are still used today. Defiantly unconventional in every respect, he lived life according to his own dictum from his book of the law, which is, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. There is no greater law than love. The great beast 666. A primary concern of Hermetic Kabbalah is the nature of divinity, its conception of which is quite markedly different from that presented in monotheistic religions or the true religion of Christianity. In particular, there is not the strict separation between divinity and humanity, which is seen in monotheism. Hermetic Kabbalah holds to the Neoplatonic conception that the manifest universe of which material creation is a part arose as a series of emanations from the Godhead. These emanations arise out of three preliminary states that are considered to precede manifestation. The first is a state of complete nullity known as Ein, or nothing. The second state is considered concentration of Ein, and it is more accurately called Ein Sof, without limit, infinite, or the third state. Caused by a movement of Ein Sof is something that is called Ein Sof R, limitless light. And it is from this initial brilliance that Hermetic Kabbalah says that the first emanation of creation originates. The Sephiroth in Hermetic Kabbalah, the Sephiroth tree, showing the lightning flash in the path. The Kabbalistic tree of life in the servants of light organizations, Hermetic theory, the emanations of creation arising from Ein Sof Ur are ten in number, and are Sephiroth called singular Sephiroth, or enumeration. These are conceptualized no differently in Hermetic Kabbalah than they are in Jewish Kabbalah. From Ein Sof Ur crystallizes Keter, the first Sephiroth of the Hermetic Kabbalistic Tree of Life. From Keter emanates the rest of the Sephiroth in turn. One is Keter, two is Chokma, three is Bina, four is Dath. Actually, I've got the numbers wrong and I apologize. I have tried to do this as smoothly as possible, but I am human and there's really no way to edit this. Four is Chesed. Five is Gibberah, Tipareth is six and is seven. Eight is Hod and nine is Yasod. Malkuth is ten. Doth is actually not assigned a number in Hermetic Kabbalah, which is what threw me off because I am much more familiar with Jewish mysticism and Jewish Kabbalah than I am with Hermetic Kabbalah, which stems from Neoplatonism and Crowleyan Satanism, otherwise known as Black Magic. Now, don't mistake me, there is absolutely nothing worse about Crowley Satanism and Black Magic, the left hand path. There is nothing more evil about this form of witchcraft and sorcery than there is the Jewish Kabbalah. Jewish mysticism is 100% witchcraft, it is 100% sorcery, and more than anything else, it is 100% perversion of the worship of the Most High God 
of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is these mystics from the, believe it or not, southern nation of Judah, where our Lord was born out of, that rejected and crucified him. Now, I am not in any way, shape, form, or fashion judging or calling them more wicked than any of the rest of us because they rejected our Lord and crucified him because the truth of the matter is at one point in time in each and every one of our lives we have also rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and put him to an open shame crucifying him all over again and if you do not believe me I suggest you go read Hebrews chapter 10. I would suggest reading the entire book of Hebrews. That being said, back to Hermetic Kabbalah and Aleister Crowley. Doth is not assigned a number as it is considered a part of Bina or Bana or a hidden Sephirah, and each Sephirah is considered to be an emanation of the divine energy, often described as the divine light whichever flows from the unmanifest through Keter into manifestation. This flow of light is indicated by the lightning flash shown on the diagrams of the Sephirot tree, which passes through each Sephirot in turn according to their enumerations. I would just like to stop for a second and quote, my Lord and Savior. Jesus said, Behold, I saw Satan fall like light, fall from heaven like lightning. So when you see Ein Sof, which starts at the top of the Sephirot tree, whether it is Hermetic Kabbalah, which is Crowley Satanism, that he literally stole from other more learned and frankly more talented magicians if one can be called such a thing how can you be talented at damning yourself and others but regardless he simply plagiarized the work of more learned men like John D like a woman for crying out loud now I know that you feminists out there will get very angry at me but we are talking about the 1800s in the 1800s feminism had not even begun it, it, it wasn't even heard of so for Crowley to take someone's work like Helen of Lovatsky's and not only idolize it, but call it his own and make it his own was showing just how untalented the wickedest man in the world truly was. Now here we are in the year 2024 and Aleister Crowley, a heroin addict who died broke alone and addicted to a drug that almost killed me and quite frankly could have been the end of me i cannot tell you how many times the enemy tried to take my life using a needle that i chose to stick in my own body i have passed out shot up and gotten high in places that would make Mr. Crowley cringe, I guarantee you. Now, that being said, we're just talking about addiction. I honestly was never involved in Satanism, and as wicked of a man as I was, and as hateful, cruel, and quite frankly, bloodthirsty as I was, I wasn't a Satanist. I knew better than to play around with black magic. I knew better to play around with white magic. I did not mess with Ouija boards. I did not play with seances. Heck, I would not, as big of a drug addict as I was, and as big of a drug dealer as I was, I would not touch drugs like LSD or 
mushrooms or ayahuasca or any hallucinogens simply because even though I was not a follower of Christ, I was very far from the straight and narrow and I was on my way to hell with gasoline drawers. I still did not mess around with the occult. If you want to know why the Remnant Warrior never messed around with the occult, all you have to do is go to the Kingdom Productions and Publishing Facebook page. And I think it's 2019's uh, Halloween episode. And you'll find out just how young I was the first time I had an experience with true evil. It's back to Crowley. The flash shown on the diagrams of the Sephirot tree that pass through each Sephirot in turn according to their enumeration. Each Sephirah is a nexus of so-called divine energy, and each has a number of attributions. These attributions enable the Kabbalists to form a comprehension of each particular Sephiroth's characteristics. The manner of applying many attributions to each Sephirah is an exemplar of the diverse nature of Hermetic Kabbalah. For example, the Sephirah Hod has the attributions of glory, perfect intelligence, the eight of the tarot deck, the planet Mercury. First of all, Mercury is not a planet. There is no such thing as planets, but we're not going to go there. They're wandering stars. That's all I'm going to say about it. In any case, the Egyptian god Thoth, the Archangel Michael. Yeah, right. The Archangel, let me tell you something, friends. The Archangel Michael has absolutely nothing. And I'm sorry, Jay Woodward. I like your videos. Every once in a while, I watch Woodward TV. But the Archangel Michael is not Jesus Christ. And he has absolutely nothing to do with the Kabbalah. And for that matter, neither is Metatron. Metatron is another name for Hillel ben Shahar. Actually, Hillel, I'm not going to go that far off the reservation. I'm just going to say Hillel ben Shahar. Check out my episode on Shahar the Fallen Seraph if you want to know more about what I'm talking about. But for now, Hillel ben Shahar is the Hebrew for the Latin word that was translated Lucifer. All right. Now, the Archangel Michael has absolutely nothing to do with Kabbalah. Metatron has absolutely nothing to do with the Father or Jesus Christ, his son. Metatron is a fallen watcher from a very, compared to first Enoch, a very new, newly written text of second and third Enoch where the patriarch Enoch actually turns into an angel and this angel's name is Metatron and of course Metatron becomes the Messiah well Metatron is not Jesus Christ and more than that Metatron is not even Enoch unless he is Enoch the evil from the line of Cain, but that's not even possible, and I'll tell you why. Because the setting in 2nd and 3rd Enoch is in heaven, and Metatron is not in heaven. Metatron is another name for Allah. Metatron is another name for Mazda, the one of the deities from Zoroastrianism. Metatron is a Another name for Hillel or Enlil. Metatron is another name, in my opinion, for Azazel. Metatron is another name for Samael. Metatron is a, another name for Baal, 
Beelzebub. Metatron is Satan is what I am trying to get across to you guys. Stay away from Metatron. Stay away from Second and Third Enoch. Second Enoch is a Gnostic book. Third Enoch is a Kabbalistic book. Now, the Roman quote-unquote god Mercury and the chemical element Mercury is who the eight emanation is supposed to be. The, the ninth, the general principle involved is that the, Kab- the Kabbalist will meditate on these attributions and by this means to acquire an understanding of the character of the Sephirah, including its correspondences, tarot, and the tree of life. Hermetic Kabbalists see the, they see the caretaker of the tarot as keys to the tree of life. Sorry, I lost my place. It's my own fault for getting up on a soapbox and rant. I for those of you who don't know, I'm actually reading from my book. I'm reading from Origins of Evil, Book One, Kabbalah. I'm reading from Chapter Seven. Chapter 7 is on Aleister Crowley, Secret Societies, and the different forms of Hermetic Kabbalah. Now, the Kabbalists, they see the tarot as keys to the Tree of Life, and the 22 cards, including the 21 trumps plus the Fool, or Zero card, and often called Major Arcana, or great mysteries are seen as correspondence to the 22 Hebrew letters and the 22 paths of the tree. And the 10 in each suit correspond to the Sephirot in the four Kabbalistic worlds and the 16 court cards relate to the classical elements in the four worlds, while the Sephirot describe the nature of divinity. The paths between them descend ways of knowing the divine. Synchronicity of Kabbalah, alchemy, astrology, and other esoteric hermetic disciplines. Orders of angels according to the hermetic order of the Golden Dawn's interpretation of the Kabbalah. There are, according to them, ten archangels, each commanding one of the choirs of angels and corresponding to one of the Sephirah is based on, guess what? What is it based on? The Jewish Kabbalah. So they can call it Hermetic Kabbalah. They can call it Christian Kabbalah. It doesn't really matter. Kabbalah is Jewish mysticism. Tomorrow, when we have our live stream and you see this video in the live stream, you're going to realize that not only is each form of Kabbalah and Jewish mysticism able to be traced back to its original source in Judaism, but also Gnosticism, and as you saw earlier today, Islamic Sufism, which is just Islamic mysticism, New Age mysticism, Hindu mysticism, Buddhist mysticism, shamanistic mysticism, Chinese and Japanese mysticism, Taoism, Taoism. Absolutely all of these forms of mysticism can be traced back to the mystery religions like the mystery religion of Zoroastrianism that began around 4,000 years ago. That's 2,000 years before Jesus Christ was born into a human body. So that is during the time of not only the Old Testament, but very close to the beginning of the Old Testament. In other words, Zoroastrianism is one of the oldest religions, and it can be argued that it is the oldest form of mysticism in the world. But at the same time, people want to argue that 
it was originally monotheistic. And is it correct to say that in speaking of Messianic DMT, that if I would achieve Adam consciousness through DMT, that I would be a Christ, I would be a part of Messiah, and collectively when enough people can go back to the Adam consciousness through the DMT experience, Messiah comes. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Alice Bailey, I, I did a lot of research on her and Helena Blavatsky in the beginning years of my research, but Alice Bailey shockingly said that the most basic initiations would be taking place in the evangelical churches. Not very long from when she wrote her her many books. She wrote about 30 books back in around the 1930s to the 50s. And here we are today. We have the basic initiations of Kabbalah taking place in our churches. Uh, one of those, Rick Warren's book, the Purpose Driven Life, he listed, I think it was 13 mystics, New Agers, and spiritualists of all kinds in that book. And that's why I put the Kabbalistic tree on the front cover. That's one reason, because I want people to know the Purpose Driven Life, the, Ka the Kabbalah tree is on the front of the original publication of that book. It's the, the tree with the roots penetrating down into the ground, and that represents as above, so below. We've, the, they've been putting their mark, their symbolism, their doctrines, their teachings right in front of us for years, and we've not seen it. We just, we've been hoodwinked. <laughs> the church yes. has been duped. Yes. And we need to get... We need to get up to speed and see what's going on and stand stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ and not another Christ. This is Amen. this is all about another Yeshua, another Jesus. And that's why I wrote the book, just so people could get familiar with basics. This, this book just gives you kind of the basics, but when you if you read it and then you hear it and then you see it, you're gonna recognize it. And Oh, I just can't stress enough. Stick with the words.